I've, I think I have a pretty good ear. I mean, ear. You pretty can't even ear, say it. Pretty good ear for music. <laughs> yeah, I can't even say it. Start there. Don't want to err on the wrong side of things. But uh, seeing a lot of different people, this one lady really stuck out and um, wanted to uh, invite her on the podcast and let her I tell her ex- story. I was ecstatic because she's an Irish singer who's making her way in country music, which that, yeah. that makes me happy right out the box. And she's uh, she's got a really good story, really unique sound. And I just I invited her. We saw her twice there. She's really cool, and just thought we'd give her a call. So do and we get to see Stu do an interview? Uh, this I'm should go well. Interview. Let's go, <laughs> Stu. This should go well. All right. Well, her name's Claire Cunningham. Is that right? Yeah. I'm excited. I've checked out some of her stuff. She actually is pretty awesome. Like she's pretty awesome. She's got a look to her too. We'll yeah. Talk about that later. What's her uh, uh, website? Well, Brendan's hitting her up. ClaireCunninghamMusic.com. You can check her out there. Um, She's got a. Uh, Let's hope this system works. Six, she's got over six million views on Hi, YouTube. Hi, Miss Claire. I can't. Come- well, off to the races. Right to Solid, voicemail. thick accent. I like it. <laughs> have her call in. Just have her call Brendan. Oh, never mind. Uh, I just had to fix it. I just said, at least she didn't give her number out. That's yeah, that's, that's always the main concern. Hello. Hello, is this Claire? <laughs> you will be correct. That's. I go by the name C L A R E. I love it. I love it. This is Brendan. It is so good to have you on. We've got I've got Stu here. I've got uh, Troy in front of me, and we've got we've got Ely here, which you wouldn't know this, but that's a really special treat. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, hey, I'm all about treats, guys. You have to have a cheat day every once in a while. <laughs> that's exactly right. Today is officially our, our all of our cheat day as we inch ever closer to the holidays. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow right, too. Exactly. How you doing, Claire? It's Stuart. Oh, I'm so good. How are you guys anyway? Doing well. We're just uh, hanging out here. I uh, was telling the guys about my little trip to Nashville and meeting you. And I, you know, uh, Aaron and I had a really oh. good Aaron and I had a really good time uh, hanging out and getting to know you. But uh, just wanted to yeah, well, s- see what's going on with with you these days. What is going on? What's not going on? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you've actually had, in the little bit of research I've done, it sounds like you've actually had a fairly, really good 2020. Is that accurate? To be honest, it's been equally shit as it has been good. Um, but I think my energy has been best served looking at the better part of it. Or at least, like, the, the bad things that have happened, and some not COVID-related, unfortunately, um, was kind of like just a testimony of like, okay, this is just putting you in this direction or the scenario has made you aware of this. You know, so like I've never been one to dwell on anything negative. I'm always very much everything serves as it should. Hold on, you're not... And some people can be. You're not negative, so you're not Irish. Because I'm, I'm Irish and I'm very <laughs> depressed. <laughs> oh my God, dude, you are like when I, when everyone's like, oh, the Irish are great and they're all so positive and friendly. I'm like, yeah, but if you go home, all they talk about is the weather and death. The two <laughs> things you can't control, and they're so fucking precious because of <laughs> yeah. the weather shit and people are always dying. So it's like, well, can we focus on something a little positive? Please? Yeah, if we don't have something to talk yeah. about, we we go back to 1847. <laughs> See, only yeah, only an Irish person would understand that joke. Yeah. To all you to all you neophytes, that is that is the heart of the potato family. I just love that you're explaining Literally. to an actually Irish woman how Irish you are. You want to be son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm... it's so funny because you people <laughs> people are always like, "Oh my God, are you like really?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm a real life leprechaun. Uh, just <laughs> make it rain while spring." Oh, I love it. I love it. So you're in Nashville no, now. Like, no, you're, you're you're in Nashville yeah. <laughs> now, which is which is the the center of really depressing music for America, right? It's country <laughs> music that that does so well. So I feel like yeah. you're in a perfect spot for for being able to pull that inner longing out of an Irish musician and a and a country musician. So Yeah, I, I I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Do it's you, like music here is real. Like it's music city though. So and I've never classified myself as country per se. So like folk Americana is what people kind of, uh, apart from my rock stuff, is what I've been kind of getting lately. And well, what's beautiful about Nashville is that people with real raw life 
come here and, and they talk about real, oh, you know, no matter where you go, there's always going to be good and bad and pros and cons. But for the majority of people here, you know, a lot of people do talk and speak and sing from the heart. And that's all I ever do. So I feel like I'm amongst those who get it, you know. Oh, I love to hear that. And I, I've always felt like maybe not necessarily country music, but as you get to like Appalachia, right? The, the, the similar, yeah. the similarities yeah. between Irish music and yeah. Appalachia, they're extremely close. Yeah. In fact, there are times where you'll hear one or the other. And if it wasn't for the brogue of the singer, you wouldn't know what you're listening to. Right. No, a hundred percent. People have actually said that to me before. It's a very Appalachian, like it's, you know, it's that, that cultural kind of, that, that, something that nobody else possesses and nobody else can kind of create. That comes from within, and that's a cultural thing. So um, you are correct in saying that, and you're not the only one. And it wasn't until I moved to America that more and more people had said that to me, and I, I looked into them, and I was like, yeah, I get it now, like, you know. It's, yeah. I, I noticed it's, that... It's I, I, I went over to Ireland, uh, this, this is a while back, but we were in Liston Varna and, and everywhere that we went, because Liston Varna in my mind, that's like, that's where the music is. I love, I love Liston Varna. Oh yeah, there's a song about that. Christy Moore thinks, oh, Liston Varna. Liston, 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 Liston Varna. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm fully aware. <laughs> Christy, Christy Moore is one of my absolute favorite artists of all time. Oh so. no, dude, you know Christy Moore. Oh, he is like I grew up on Christy Moore. Anybody who does not know Christy Moore is just in for a treat. Well, so that is actually he why is I like went to. That's why I favorite. went to List in Varna because I was like, well, that's got to wow. be where the music is. And of course, wow, the, the music was amazing. But the one thing I noticed that blew my mind is in every true Irish place I went where they're playing music, it was all Irish music until they got to Country Roads. And then they played that like it was an old <laughs> Irish song. What the hell is that? <laughs> that's a big staple back home. I think that's why my ears burn when I hear it here because I'm just like, oh my God, I've just listened to the song. It's like, it's one of Ireland's, like, I want to say staple songs. Like, Country Road here in America is huge and it's pretty natural, but I don't know. It's just like Ireland latched on to that one too, and it's just, oh God. And it's it's kind of like it's it's so overdone. It's it's a shame because what a great song. But like you know, with any good song, when it's overdone, it's you know. <laughs> I get it. Hey, Claire, it's Stuart. Um, just out of curiosity, how does a girl from Ireland get into? Because in listening to what you what you sing and everything that you do. You've done like a thousand different genres and you've gone from, you know, you're, you're in Ireland then you were with a rock band called Thunder Mother and then you're in Nashville. You've won awards for uh, songwriting and folk. So you're kind of, do you have a, is there something that you're a particular, a favorite genre of music or are you just kind of going where it takes you? This is where I've probably had the biggest, um, and I, I don't say issue lightly, but in, in my musical career, is that the best kind of scenario to, to uh, or, um, you know, the definition to put it as, is more like I'm a buffet of all styles. And I think that lends itself because I, I'm kind of very, I'm so diverse, but and I love, I love music as a whole. So I've never classified myself as one thing, which but by nature is, is, is you know, it's, it's playing devil's advocate really with trying to get signed or trying to do anything because you need to be able to label yourself and be able to market yourself um, in order to sell a product. But I've always been very kind of lenient towards my roots, but also, you know, I have, I have maybe... And I, or at least I've been told I have what other females don't possess a lot of, and that is that grit and that rock side, and and I do love that side. But I think my heart and soul, and now moving forward and having gotten a few of those awards, made me more aware of the fact that okay, I have this within me, and when I do this style, especially my music stuff, I teach people in a way that, and I've been told, or this is this is coming from other people that. 
that you possess something that not a lot of people have and it's a gift and you need to keep doing that. And I don't um I don't question that at all. But I I, I don't want to be just known as one thing. And and I've used examples such as, you know, Prince, Bowie, um, even Beatles went through different stages. I don't believe that you have to as an artist box yourself to sell yourself. I'd rather not sell myself and be me. Um, and give people a variety of things that I truly believe come from the heart rather than just sell out and sign on the dotted line and be something to market myself as a thing, if that even makes sense. But, yeah, no, you're right. And, and a lot of people who who do research and look at me, they're like, what are you? Uh, you know, it, <laughs> you're everywhere and anywhere. And I'm like, well... That's, it's not on purpose, but it's also not on accident either. I've chosen, I've chosen to to just do what feels right and what feels good. And isn't that what music is? Like, you know, you have to define yourself in a, a sad state, really, I think, in, in, in life in general. But, um, but I get it. You know, people want to... Even when I upload music, you have to put it into a box in order to upload it. So... Yeah, they um, literally make you check the box. Like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is this so that we can put you into this playlist or we can put you? And I've always struggled. I've always, in fact, I've reached out to people. I'm like, so, hey, guys, got a quick question. What is this? <laughs> it's the first question I have even after I write a song with people. I'm like, so what would you classify this as? And they're like, why, why are you worried about that? I'm like, because I know I'm going to have to box this at some point, but. I think that's, it's just, I'm, look, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a real breaker, but I'm also, I'm very into, you know, doing what feels good and what feels right. And if you have a message, why does it matter, you know? And I think as an artist, you can't box art, you can't box artists. Like, we've looked at that going through the centuries and, um, and I'm okay with that. Like when people say, well, you have to do this in order to do that. And I'm like, hey, there are no rules. And like people defy them all the time. Well, and some of so, the best artists do find a way to kind of cross <laughs> genres. I mean, that's, I think that's the true, <laughs> the true talent, you know, to be able to do that. But that's also to your point, being honest with yourself. Like I'm into this right now and I'm feeling this and this is what I'm going to yeah. put out there. Well, that's got to yeah. be nice though, because I, you're, I, in, yeah. you're in Nashville where... A lot of money can be made, and I know you said you didn't want to sell out, but come on, money's awesome. So there's always going to be a time yeah. where you're willing to make some money. You're in a great spot because there's so much writing that occurs in Nashville that you can actually write yeah. rock songs, country songs. Hell, you can write pop songs in Nashville and have them get get picked mm -hmm. up. So you're you're really in a good spot there because you don't have to box yourself in if you if you lean into kind of some of the the writing. Yeah, no, 100%. And I do tend to, when it comes to writing, if I'm not by myself, I am very much involved with people who are older than country, usually, or who get, like, the messages that we need to put across. And especially now, in these times, I truly believe in giving people messages that are going to heal. Because I know through music, healing, music is healing by its, and it's, scientific improvement you know i'm not just here saying this and um, but i got a message a few years ago um that came through and i always knew it in my gut but something had come through to say look you are here and you're here to heal and it's been a it's there's there's been a few you know things to talk from that um but i've always known this to be true and that's why when people say like what is it you want to do I said, look, here's the thing, and, and and I agree with you with money, but money, money, like anything, is energy, and energy flows or energy goes, and vice versa. Yep, yep. I've always said, follow your passion, not a paycheck. Um, and money, money to me is just it's it's just an object. It's not something I would never wake up every morning thinking, oh, I'm doing that because I'm getting paid. No. If success in my mind isn't a bank balance, it's actually what have I done to make a difference? Like if I can save one life with a song or I get numerous people coming up, hey, I can't believe you actually put that into like that feels like my life and like the look. 
I am here and I need to go through shit in life in order to talk or sing about it so that I can be a voice for those who might not feel like they have one. Um, because it, it's not been handed to me, silver platter. Okay, I have gone through the work to a <laughs> human thing. But I believe I've been put through those scenarios for a very good reason. And that is to be able to come out the other end and be able to actually talk openly about it, be raw about it, and say, hey, like, yeah, I've gone, I, like, there's a lyric in the song, I've been where you are, hopeless and helpless. But, you know, you can there is there is a way out or there is a light or whatever you want to believe in. I don't mind, but, you know, if, if I can do it, you certainly can. <laughs> Trust me, you know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So what's it, what's it yeah. like, um, what's the typical, what's your typical week like in <laughs> Nashville? Because, uh, you know, I got to see you twice <laughs> play and – it seems like I know you're doing it for all the right reasons, uh, but it just seems like it's a it's a true grind. But you seem to enjoy it thoroughly. Um, is is that is that pretty much the case for just about all the singers we see out there on the live stages? Yeah, I mean, so I'm I I have well until COVID hit, I kind of had to lock down here, but I was spending my time between here and Nantucket, where. Um, my sister and her husband uh, live and I write songs for their film production company, Yellow Productions, as part of my visa. And so um, predominantly, you know, songwriting is what I do and I write for many different scenarios. But as a performing artist, um, you know, the, like anywhere, like here, yes, Nashville, it's definitely, there's it's cutthroat, you know, but people are yeah, just so inviting yeah. and, you know, it's, you know, I always looked at L.A. and I was like, yeah, that's definitely more my scene, more my kind of style. Um, but something drew me to here. And I knew I was drawn here for a reason. Um, and I would split my time between here and Nantucket for sure, because there's just something so special. I'm sure Stuart, from having visited it, knows like there's just such a camaraderie here. And people on the same level want the same. There's a good energy. So despite any pandemic that's going on because you can let something you can choose to let something stop you or like when people are like i don't understand there's a pandemic and you're still you're even busier i'm like yeah because nothing will stop me doing what i do like no, nothing and, and there's, no there's to do, no pandemic <laughs> yeah there's inspiration in in the pandemic honestly it makes people look at things yeah. differently and I, I i gotta tell you i'm pretty impressed that you you managed to come to America and you summer in Nashville or you summer in Nantucket and you, you winter in Nashville. I mean, come on. That is like, you couldn't ask for a better place to land between those two places. I know. You're, you're doing yeah, it right. No, I, know. I, I think most people would aspire to, uh, to do what you have done to say the least. I actually saw you did a, uh, and I don't know the name of it, but it was in Nantucket. It was a festival and you did a, you did it, uh, mm. an Irish song, had a Gaelic name to it, and I, I don't want to butcher it by even yeah. attempting, but that was... That <laughs> was... It's Aaron and Mo Cree, right? Aaron. Oh, my God, good for you. Yes, yes, yes. Look I at love you, the still. Song, so. Well, yeah, that song is hauntingly beautiful. Aaron, that is fantastic. Well, I appreciate that. Well, that came from a source. I, I wrote that, um, I penned that myself about three years ago. I was actually in my sister's, spare room in her house in Nantucket and it was for the Nantucket project which is exactly what you're talking about um, the Nantucket project is a, non, uh, is a non-profit organization that they run twice uh, a year on Nantucket and a lot of great names and big big names come come every year to speak about issues such as racism um, and the the main um theme for the last few years has been neighborhood and you know I got to meet George uh, Bush um, Lance Armstrong uh, Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers was playing that year so we we were up on stage with him I mean all these people with such influence and such stories and Amanda uh, Knox was a girl who so I since was listening to Joe Rogan's interview with uh, Jason Flom and if nobody knows who Jason Blom is, they have the Innocence Project. And yep, they, yep. Um, yeah, yeah, amazing. Like, And so Amanda Knox is one of the the um, convicted 
murders that he had um, saved, um, and so many like her. Um, so she spoke to that, that project that year. But that song came into fruition because I knew I needed a song that was going to stand one the test time, show a bit of my culture, but also touch people maybe. But I wrote it in 10 minutes, dude. I like I was sitting in that bedroom and it just came out of nowhere. And, um, you know, Ireland gave me everything I, I guess I needed. Um, it was too small for, for what I wanted. And I knew that from a very young age. I knew I always was going to leave. But um, there's something so beautiful that, you know, that came from there. And I'm never going to forget where I come from. Like I've many songs on war that you're going to hear next year. That state that I'm not. I'm not here to say, oh, I left it on the chip. You know, it's it's a beautiful place. It gave me everything I needed, and it's in that song. You know, you gave me everything I need. You know, yeah. And you it's, gave it's, me all there's me. so many of us over here who just long for Ireland and don't actually know anything about it. We just, you know, we know. we look at it. We look at it through very rose-colored glasses, to say the least. And it's uh it's a beautiful place. You guys do, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like, it warms my heart. Like, I know I hear, oh, my God, I'm Irish, and I visited this town 10 years ago, and I'm like, great. Um, but, you know, there is something so beautiful about being here, and when people are so passionate about place, even they haven't even visited it, I'm like, that's incredible. Like, that's special. Yeah, we've you been know? we've been blessed to be to be Irish. I say we. <laughs> I, I was born in Chicago, so I'm not exactly <laughs> Irish. But as as my father said, he's like, well, you've got the curse. <laughs> so I believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I believe it in my you soul. I know. I know <laughs> you have you have a gig you're getting to shortly. But I have something I want to ask. Do you have a couple more mm. minutes? Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, go ahead. So obviously, Fairy Tale in New York is. A oh yeah. Very, very popular ah, song from, from Shane, Shane McGowan and the Pogues. And Boom. it's a it's a it's a Christmas staple around this house. My kids don't quite understand what that is that they're hearing, but they recognize it from when they were infants. My daughter says, Oh, nothing puts me to sleep like that song you play. And oh I'm like, my And wow. it's 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 heartbreaking because I know what it's about <laughs> and she hasn't quite pieced it all together. But this seems to be this seems to be the year that artists have decided to finally start covering Fairy Tale of New York. And they are butchering yeah. the hell out of that second verse because clearly there's some language in there that these days it, it's, it's just not it's just not PC anymore. So people tend to tend to avert, you know, avoid that that one particular line and. I heard one yesterday by Bon Jovi. Have you happened to hear Bon Jovi's version of Fairy Tale in New York? I am dying to hear that. That's that's intriguing. <laughs> you have got to check this out. He took that entire second verse and butchered the shit out of it. Most people I hear that do it, they just they just change one or two words and kind of move on. He completely redid it and it was so blasphemous that I was far more offended by what he did than the actual lyrics. In, oh my in, God, that's hilarious. <laughs> and I just, I just wanted to know if like, you know, if you've heard other people covering it, how they're doing it, how you feel about that. Actually, honestly, I have not. Um, that, that song to me is just, and I've, it's wild to me that you even know it because I have often said it to people here. And I played it for one of my um, great, he's, he's fantastic. He's known as Christmas Corey, Corey Lee Barker. I write with him all the time and I even showed it to him and he's such a, he loves all that kind of thing. And he's, this is amazing. Why have you guys not heard this? I, I'm shocked um, when people I have not heard this. I know. I need it's you like, to yeah, do me a I favor and right. check it out. I need you to check out Bon Jovi's version. Oh, it is so heartbreaking. Oh, but it's, it's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I was, I mean, any song that starts with, it was Christmas Eve, babe, in the drunk tank. I mean, for that to be the opening line, I'm like, well, I know. I, I'm all I in. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's true. And that's why I always tell people when, I, sometimes I'm in rooms and people are like, oh, I don't know if you can say that. I'm like, no, now is the perfect time to talk about this shit. Yeah, no, like, that's absolutely right. I, and, and in that particular yeah. context, it's, it's really, obviously, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not homophobic it's clearly a slur but it's not homophobic he is 
yeah. she she yeah. is just she's using that as, as a derogatory, which I get. That's horribly wrong, but she's just using it in the I way know. they speak. I mean, she's a she's a junkie. He's a drunk. Yeah. There's a lot going on in that song, and oh, there is, there is. You know, it she's just a, she's attacking him in that moment and saying, you know, thank God it's our last, and. I yeah. I've always played it and and I still you know when it's playing on the record player I'm always like okay that's a little that's a little much that we're playing this on Christmas morning but damn it this is what you open your gifts to this is how it goes <laughs> this is just this is this yeah. is this is the dark side of your heritage you got both sides but you you got to hear you got to hear the way some of these new artists are butchering it and I've heard some people actually do a really good job with it and then Bon Jovi, I yeah. think, though, is the absolute opposite end of the spectrum. So I'm glad wow. someone with your knowledge of music, I'm able to turn you on to a steaming turd. You know? I am definitely intrigued, and I will let you know as soon as I've heard it. Because it's not a typical song I've ever heard anybody really cover. You know, it's really, it's, it's, I feel like it was always like Ireland's little secret, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, it got out. I mean, it's like they play it over yeah. in England a lot, and then they, you know, oh, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, over here you don't you don't hear it too much. But I'm a, I'm a it, big Pogues no, fan. Um, yeah. Are you excited about the uh, the Crock of Gold Shane McGowan uh, documentary coming out? Oh, dude, that's gonna be something. <laughs> it is. I saw Shane. And if people I... want to know. Oh my God, he's insane. Like he's just. Tough... How that man is alive is beyond me. Well, only the good die young, so that son of a bitch will live forever. I had the pleasure of seeing the Pog- I had the pleasure of seeing the Pogues a few years ago at the nine thirty club in DC and I'll tell you you can't understand oh, wow. a, you can't understand a word that guy's saying, but when he starts singing, nope. it's all there. It's crazy, isn't it? Like, I remember as a child even watching what we, the staple Saturday night or Friday night show was the Late Late Show. And we have a Christmas special, always a Christmas, um, called the Toy Show. And it was the Late Late Toy Show. Kitty McGowan is getting on that stage and he falls literally live on television. That adds up. He is <laughs> off the space. He has no teeth in his mouth. And people are like, how is this? Like, how? And we're like, he's Shane McGowan. He's like, that's, that's what we are. Yeah, there's, you know? there's certain people that make, <laughs> make drinking and drug look cool, and then there's Shane McGowan. And you're like, oh, I mean, yeah, I should oh, probably temper that. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just like, it's wild. Like, he is just, he's a whole new, he's a specimen of his own. <laughs> and, and so he's somebody, to go back to your original point of, like, all different genres, look, he was a guy who was doing traditional folk Irish music, and they considered it yep. absolute punk at the time. It was yep. punk music, and now you listen to it, and it's, yep. like, it's so tame compared to the Dropkick Murphys or some of these other oh, God. You know, punk bands. I mean, you, yeah, you hit the nail on the head, even with anything like when people say country today, they're like, well, what is country by definition? It's not what maybe is coming out today. So when people try to classify styles nowadays, it's like, well, it's a different era. We're in a different, we're, you know, what, what was classified as, you know, folk back in the day is now something completely different. So well, country's again, coming back. Country's sure. coming back to its roots. I think I it started. It started I with. It yeah, yeah, you know, you had you had Stapleton and kind of uh, mm-hmm. some of these guys kind of starting that Sturgill, and now you've got the Tyler yeah. Childress of the world and Coulter Walls. I mean, yeah. it's 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 back. But then you still have the pop country, and look, I like it all. Oh, I mean, look, it serves its purpose. When people say that shit, I'm like, look, it might not be your cup of tea, but it's some of these art and it's selling. So. If it's not, if you don't have something positive to say, close your mouth and just move on. So, I, so Claire, yeah, just, just speaking, a, you're, yeah. you're my, you're my cup of tea. I like what you got going on there. So I'm curious <laughs> where, where can our listeners find you? Where can they uh, look you up? I mean, how is the best way for them to get a hold yeah. of your music and find you? I kind of always tell people my website, which I run myself, guys. So don't judge, okay? Um, it has all the links that you could possibly need and all the information. So, um, so www. Um, and Claire Cunningham, my full name. So there's no I in my name. So C L A R E, and then C U N N I N T H A M at 
Music for ClaireCunningMusic.com. So ClaireCunningHamMusic.com. Claire um, yeah. And then all my handles, apart from my YouTube, are at Claire C. Official. So C-L-A-R-E-C. Official. Oh, you got that um, official tag. Well done. <laughs> I did. But, you know, I'm still, I'm still going to do a study on this because I love neurological science and how the brain works. But everybody says Claire Official. The amount of venues and people who have um, put at Claire Official and don't see the C. There's something that the way the eye scans and the brain takes it in, they miss that C. And I'm like, oh, God, I need to change this. But it's too late now. No, so, it's too late now. Um, That's the official. You can't go back. You know, you, look, you dropped the eye, yeah. you added a C. It's like <laughs> everyone sees it their own way. <laughs> Okay, I pay for that. Why did you have to call me Claire after the county Claire in Ireland and not with an I? Because you know how many Claire Cunninghams there's a there's a triathlon Claire Cunningham, and because I'm bulky into sports, and you know they're always like, oh my god, that must be her. And then there's Claire Cunningham, the super bitch in uh, it's like a British sitcom kind of thing called Hollyoaks. So I'm like, all right, I'm competing with two Claire Cunninghams out there, so. I'm the one. If you just put music after it or a singer, you'll 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 get it. Well, there's only one Claire Cunningham in our books. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Well, you guys are awesome for even having me. I so so appreciate it. Oh, we're so we're so glad to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're like literally in between oh. gigs, so this is. This this really was special that you were able to help us out with this. This is this is awesome. Stu has been literally know. ranting and raving about you ever since he came back. So we've all been checking you out, and your stuff is fantastic. So thank you for for gracing us with your time. Oh my god, and you guys are awesome because I've been checking out your stuff, and it's cool. So we need to do this again, and we'll do a longer session for sure. I love it. Well, you know what's in between Nantucket and Nashville? <laughs> Richmond, Virginia. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It so is. So, you know, and I do plan to get on the road as soon as, you know, things start opening up a little bit more. I'm going to definitely make use of uh, of getting on the road and doing radio tours and doing more of these type of things and different performances because it's important you know i agree i agree well we're going to get your name out there as best we can and you just keep doing what you're doing because you're kicking ass and couldn't, couldn't be more excited for you and you guys and i so appreciate it so stay safe right there and yeah let's do this really soon sounds Again. good all right, all right. Well, we'll talk Thanks, to claire. you soon take care claire awesome take care guys lots of love <laughs> yes later <laughs> slancha <laughs> I got in a slancha. You see that? Dude, <laughs> how happy so, is this dude right now, it's dude? Static. Cloud <laughs> dude, nine. You got to talk Held to his own with an Irish woman. Yeah. Yes. When she dropped, when I said listen, Varna, and she went straight to Christy Moore, I was like, oh, my people. I felt like it was just a challenge for him to show her how much he knew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I mean, I. I haven't even scratched. Think, I guarantee I could sit around with her all night and talk. He thinks he's <laughs> on her level of Irish. No, yeah. I'm definitely the, not. I'm definitely not. <laughs> you don't believe that. You don't believe that. I don't. I don't. But I don't, I'm not going to try to put myself out there. No, I, we're one in the same, pretty much. Oh, I yeah. dropped a wee at one point, and I was like, "Fuck!" That's like when I act like we when the Bears are playing. Like I'm not on the Bears. I'm not yeah, from Ireland. Right. I got to tone it down. But she is awesome. Like, Dude, she's so, the real deal. I mean, having the conversations with her when we were out there in Nashville, and she was telling us a little bit about her story. She's just from the heart, and she check her out, guys. Yeah, uh, it's ClaireCunninghamMusic.com. She's really good. Yeah, she is fantastic. There's no I in Claire. There's there's not. Make sure. Right. There's not. We need to remember that. <laughs> so that that was that was cool, Stu. Good work, man. Nice job, Stu. Hell yeah. Got us a hell of a guest. Now I'm dying for a beer though. Like I need to uh we we're we're at deli time. We should we should Yeah, just... how are we gonna do this? Oh. So I was gonna do them blind, but you know what? I think we're grown ups. We yeah. can just we can decipher between okay. the two. I was gonna say we don't have an extra set of hands here.